Hi, this is live on KXP at home. My name is Greg Vandy. I'm at home in Seattle. This is where the music matters, 90.3 FM in Seattle and all around the world, wherever you may listen at kxp.org. Real excited to do this one today. I hope you're having a good one. We can definitely take your com- uh, your questions and comments on the comment section there. You'll see on the sidebar. I'm really happy to uh, introduce and talk to Mr. Lonnie Holly uh, today during this one. Uh, since 1979, uh, Lonnie Holly has devoted his life to the practice of improvisational creativity. His music, uh, born of struggle and hardship, has manifested itself in drawings and paintings, sculpture, photography, performance, and sound. His work is now in collections of major museums throughout the country on permanent display in the United Nations and has been displayed in the White House Rose Garden. His music and and lyrics are improvised on the spot every time and morph and evolve with every event, concert, and recording, including this one. Uh, And for our needs to uh, have a reliable connection, Lonnie pre-recorded this performance a few days ago at my buddy and his manager's friend's house, Matt Arnett. And with no further ado, let's bring in Lonnie Holly from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Lonnie. Hello, thumbs up from other universe. Thank you all for having me. Yeah, hey man, it's good to see you. It's good to see you again. The last time I, I saw you was at Pickathon down there at that farm in Portland, Oregon. And uh, how you been? Uh, really keeping focus. Uh, concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And during the time of the virus, hoping that we as a people understand that we must continue to keep pushing on no matter what. It's like all of us is in the military of the earth itself now with the virus being the one that we are at war with. And we're trying to win this war, but we must be able to keep focused, keep learning about it in order to conquer it. Yeah, agreed. And you're in that a uh, great state of Georgia, which has been a bit controversial in this whole thing in terms of uh, the leadership from your governor and in terms of uh, people's behavior down there. Can you comment at all about what it's like in Georgia as opposed to other places? Are people wearing their masks? Are people being considerate? Um, what's your feelings on what's going on there? I think it's about when we feel that it's all right for us to do things that we don't quite understand. And we find ourselves breaking away from the norm of activities just to get back to what we are used to. I can't comment on the governmental activities like that. I can only comment on what I find to be the frustrating points of it for us, the humans, that is being administrated over and having to deal with the rules and regulations that is laid out. And a lot of times by us being humans and have gotten used to going and and having a good time going and working and coming back in and having uh, setting schedules to go to work, to come in on the weekends. We have scheduled times that we take advantage of that freedom and have our little outings. Well, when those things get stopped, it's almost like we are having to, as for one thing, re-recognize situations, understand them, and relearn them. It's not that 
we are hard-headed humans, but it takes a time for any of us to allow thoughts to be digested enough for us to say that we have learned it. You got to remember how many grades you go through before you can consider to be graduated all the way through your smaller grades until your bigger grades until you get out of high school and then get ready for college. You're still learning. In the universe, we are still learning all the way from uh, the womb, being born until death, and that's being buried. Even we have to learn about being buried. But you don't just throw no human bodies out and expect for them to decompose without having a problem. Yeah. Lonnie, you uh, made a new album, which is called National Freedom, which is the name of Richard Swift's studio. And like I mentioned before, you uh, worked with Richard Swift, who is a huge hero of mine, one of my favorite producers. And I'll be playing one of those songs tonight on my radio show later on. Uh, but since you don't play really the same song twice, um, this performance today will be uh, once in a lifetime performances. You've recorded them a couple of days ago and you will, will probably never revisit them again. That's really your style of improv. Um, but can you comment on working with Richard Swift and making that album, which is, uh, I guess a few years ago now. The thing about, I, I, I call it a spiritual encounter when you come in contact with somebody else that's on the same plane that you're on, that's trying to deliver a, a, a similar message that you're trying to deliver, that's trying to orchestrate uh, the instruments to the point that they make a sound that could be a sound that is going to be uh, useful in the universal manner. When I say thumbs up for Mother Universe, that means for the whole entire existence of the purpose of the universe. And that's kind of hard to beat. And so when I met Swift, I kind of met that kind of person that was interested in helping me get there. Well, let's hear some songs that you made for this session. There's five of them. Uh, do you want to introduce the first song? What's the first one going to be? You got a list in front of you? I do. I do. Yeah, this one is uh, Let Me Get These Teardrops Out of My Way. This first song my... is, is really about we having so much crying going on now until... We're having people's crying in, in secret. People's are crying in beds where it's either their ancestors or their mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, or even down to their children are being affected by this coronavirus. And we are also having other problems of not being, it, it's so many issues. So I'm gonna let you hear the song. Okay. And then we'll talk about it after. Sounds good. Here's Lonnie Holly. <clears throat> and she say, Let me get these teardrops out of my way. Hey. Because I've seen so many mothers crying about their children, children, children dying. She 
said, hey, hey, America, America, let me get these teardrops out of my way. She said, I saw my grandchildren out playing just the other day. And I was, I was, I was thinking carefully. I was thinking carefully as I said my prayers for each and every one. And oh, 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 America, please let me get these children. Out of my way, somebody told me that artificial flowers are being laid down all around the world. For a human cause And all Just because Somebody said My life, my life My life mattered And they say it Black lives matters too She said, let me get these teardrops out of my eye, out of my way. And then the sun, then the sun came along and dried, dried them up into precipitation. Oh, oh, dried them up. I said, Lord, Lord, let me get these teardrops out of my way. Where, where I can see us on the journey and carrying on. With the best of our ability Let me see, let me see, let me see Let me get these teardrops Out of our way All right, Lonnie, thank you for that one. That one's called Let Me uh, Get These Teardrops Out of My Way, recorded uh, at uh, Grocery on Home, which is a venue, Home Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where you are now. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, tell me, t- tell me some more about that last song. What was that? Uh, what was the inspiration for that it's one? The inspiration for that were our everyday life that we're living today. How my thing is i'm seeing so many new events that is occurring and unfolding that is almost like me at the edge of the ocean with a huge stone about to toss it into the ocean that is going to cause ripples and waves and not knowing what the end result of just me pitching the stone into the water, what damage it would do. Sometimes we do things and we do them for different purposes. Some people do them to get attention. Uh, Some people do them for 
to embody power. Some people do them to grow opportunities, not for just for themselves, but for others too, they have to have, and that's the reason they call them companies and factories and industries. And in the process of all of these companies, industries, and factories, and small business owners playing the part of the constructive manner of America, and then all of a sudden you shut it down. I think we have had maybe three government shutdown, closing the government down. And in the process of closing the government down, you turn around and you come up with an idea or uh, something occur that you're going to close down the whole United States of America. And other countries are beginning to close down. Everybody in this big economy grower began to close down, close down, close down. So that means all the seeds that you have planted, everything that you had established it or put on your calendar to happen, boom, it just blowed out of the window and the seeds are not going to get grown. They are not going to have the harvesters to harvest them. They are not going to have the industries to be shipping these fruits and vegetables or whatever else that is there. Not only the fruits and vegetables, but think about the livestock, the creatures and the animals and everything else that have to be cared about. And we, the humans being the caretakers. It's something else besides we, the people, we just think about our own personal self. So a lot of times we th have to think like the Bible say, my people shall perish because of lack of knowledge. And we are in that state of existing now. We are liking of what's really happening. We've got some more songs. This next song, Lonnie, is uh, at a time like this, a man was lynched yesterday. And that's also we're going to hear the song that you made looking back. Again, these are uh, one of a kind performances. You don't repeat your songs. You made these a few days ago at uh, Grocery on Home right there. Let's hear the next two songs in a row. Uh, can you introduce this next one, Lonnie? At a time like this? At a, at a time like this is actually going to be singing about what time it is now. I mean, when somebody just, uh, when peoples are being killed, what, what do you call a lynching now? What do you call uh, a murder? Or what do you call uh, a time when humans that is out protesting and somebody beat them to death or somebody just trying to get from point A to Part Z, and they end up dead because of it. And it's anger, it's frustration, it's aggravation. It's all. It's taking all of this just for us to be able to say we made it to this point of togetherness, and that's where we headed. We headed towards togetherness. Let's listen at that. Right on. This is the next song. Also, if you want to comment, ask a question to Lonnie directly, go ahead and leave a comment. And I'll see that and we'll send some questions from you to Lonnie. Let's hear the song at a time like this. At a time like 
this A man was lynched yesterday Being broadcast all around the world As we all seem to be way down low on our knees again. As his life was brought to being over and his spirit descended, descended away. We looked up past the sole of his feet. As he hung on the limb of that tree In a time like this A man was lynched yesterday And women's, women's, and women's cried out around the world he cried out to every boy and girl that was turning out to be the students going to school just to learn in a time like this. That a human can be less day after day. Picture it in your mind. that swinging there if it's not a human was that hanging there are we still examples in a pictorial manner of how Christ hung there, hung there, hung there on the cross. Oh, a man was lynched today. A human, we are the humanity. Can I say it? Can I say it? That a human was lynched some days ago. Just to remind us of a human being lynched today, today, today. Today, today, today.
looking back at humans activities activity the only way that we could see was by ways of monitor we were so deep in space we were so deep in space on the journey of exploration I hit my keyboard and I typed right away wake up wake up wake up human This mothership is yours And yes, oh yes What you do really matters In a daddily kind of way Data banks, data banks after data banks Filled with information, looking back And the only way we could see And get an understanding of our mothership going around We zoomed in to the humans that was bound wake up wake up I writ in my journal humans wake up please humans wake up Mm-hmm. All right, Lonnie Holly. Thank you so much, Lonnie. That was Looking Back. The song before that was At a Time Like This. Lonnie, I have a question from a viewer. It's from Soul Sus. He'd like to know what your earliest memory was. My earliest memory of of how to do music or art? No, just uh, both. I guess maybe just of life. I, I was trying to explain that to Matt today. I think the most hurtful things for me were my earliest memory, and that were a little bitty boy maybe i can almost remember maybe after two years old moving around and about at the state fairground seeing all the attractions there a lot of the things were so intense and so much but as far as the barking of materials that i had to encounter and also moving on up from that were my first days of seeing pictures on the big screen out my back door of the house that I was living at on Lom Avenue. Matt found out as Lom Boulevard in the West End part of Alabama. 
Birmingham, Dead Body, State Fairground. No more, neither one of them was any further than I think they 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 shared defense marker between you leave one and you was over into the property of the other. So mm -hmm. that type of entertainment was the thickness of my first memories was really thick uh, occurrence by humans and what they were doing, the type of movies that was being made. All of these things was fascinating uh, for me to learn from. Yeah, you uh, were in and out of several foster homes. You were born in Birmingham. Um, you were working from a very, very young age. Um, and I would imagine that a lot of your art is informed by your background, by your personal history. And um, in, in talking to Matt recently, he informed me that you were, as a young boy, picked up by the police in Birmingham and sent to a notorious Alabama industrial school for Negro children. Uh, I would imagine that was the early 60s, late 50s. And, um, you know, reflecting back on that, I'm sure that still informs you and your, your art and your, your music. Is, is that I, right? I, I think that's going to be with me till the day I die. Uh, it's not as harsh for my memory as it once were. Or you got to remember, we, the people, from the people, for the people, a lot of times if we take and break that down, our emotions and our feelings and what we go through is pretty well intensely the same. The same thing that was happening to the soldiers in the army, you could think about me being in a place called the Alabama Industrial School for Negro Children, but our our basic training or our trainings was nothing like military training. If we didn't learn it, we got our ass whooped. We got sometime almost beat to death. So we was living in fear every day. All of our moments was in fear. I try to get people to understand that that caused a almost shell shock. It's just, we wasn't putting no shells and no big old guns and shooting them off. But we was always jumping, <clears throat> thinking that somebody was gonna hit us or break us down or beat us or hit us upside the head for not doing something that we didn't know how to do. So this is a child that was growing in one of the most fearful abuses that could ever, you could ever imagine. And I would imagine you found uh an escape in your art. At what point did you start using found objects and everyday things to create visual works of art? At what age do you think that was? I, I, I took uh, a couple of filmmakers and videos or uh, uh, interviewers back to some things I had did when I was five years old, mm -hmm. up and down the creeks and the ditches of me trying to trap crawdads and me just trying to get an understanding of broken rocks and how to just build rocks and glass. Because I wanted to know, I, I, I've always been curious, but also I wanted to know what would this do? You know, it's like having a, a piece of broken mirror and you put it down on the base of your of your the water and then you take and put some stones around that and put some broken glass rather 
up on top of that, and then the direct sunlight hits through that, that's gonna, I don't know whether you ever did it or not. It's gonna burn through like a magnifying glass and set something on fire. Well, this was allowing me to become a young scientist, not only in my way of doing it, I still have to say, I do things my way. I try not to force anything that I do on nobody. I just do them my way as an example of what my brain can do, have done, and hopefully that I will be able to example as I move towards the end of my life. Have you ever worked with uh, pre-existing sounds and music to make new music? In other words, you work with a lot of found objects to make visual art. Have you ever used uh, old recordings from other people, sort of mix them together or make a sound collage with, with sounds and other musics? Uh, in a sense, no, I haven't. But in a sense, what you do once that sound get in your brain, once you've heard the different types of sound, it's all they're always going to remain now. So by you being the artist and the musician, you're going to pick that little bit of pieces from that like you're in the field, like you're in the garden, like you're making a gumbo, but making it fresh from the garden. You're going to pick the ingredients. You're going to chop them up. Just chopping them up, that's a sound by itself just bamming on whatever you're going to put into that gumbo, uh, just the stirring of that pot, all of that makes a difference. Just dropping the rocks in the stones in the water, just dropping the stones on the pieces of glass, tin or wood, each one of those sounds made a difference. Or just listening at the water flow going down the drain, towards the ditch and the creek. All of those things was some very elementary or earlier experience for my uh, intake by my ears. Yes. You just have to be open to it. I call it earring. Some people call it hearing. I call it earring. It goes in your ear. You got to have your ears if you ever, you ever saw anything with big ears, their ears, their head could be still, but their ears always be moving toward the sound. <laughs> For some reason, we the humans, we are made with a big cylinder on the side of our head, and it's got a muscle around it that's almost like a speaker. And when something hit it, it go down through vibrating and vibrating all the way to it get to the brain. So once you learn and appreciate, sometimes you could be listening to that piece of music and you lay your head on the pillow, you drown out one of your ears and the other ear still pick it up. But once you turn the ear or the head straight up on the pillow, you're getting a uh, surround sound. You understand? So it makes a difference how you hear. I, I love those vibrations. Lonnie, let's hear the fourth song. This is a, the, the fourth one out of five. It's called If I Wasn't Given a Chance to Matter, Would I Matter? And you recorded this a few days ago. And I want to remind everyone that I am seeing your questions. I'll try to get to more of your questions for Lonnie. But let's hear the next song. But again, if I didn't have a chance to matter, I wouldn't have never mattered. Let's hear it. <clears throat> it's almost like you can't. Dry all the eyes I 
You can't get around to rubbing all the feet. And the aching bodies. And so much been gone through the mind of the human. I think they all have it in common. If I haven't been given a chance to matter, Would I ever matter, matter at all? If I grew up in a matterless world If I grew up somewhere Where the brains of man, woman, boys and girls was never considered Oh, I can see my mother and my father's eyes Looking down at me Growing along my way Hoping that I turn out matter just matter nude just grow up and join the military and do the best I can I just do good and serving my country But if not, I could become a construction leader and show them all how to rebuild the dam, to hold the water in place, or build a spacecraft. Take us deeper, deeper, and deeper, and deeper out into space. Probably get me a job at Bourne and tell them I want to build a big airplane that ever left the earth. To take passengers around on long distance flights. Become the great ship maker to be better than Nora, Billy, and Ark, you know. If it needed. I can gather everything together and save them from a mighty flood if we could only matter when you look down at a newborn baby laying there him or her, her and say this child is gonna matter When you see a little three-year-old holding digital devices in their hand as they are playing, this child is gonna matter. And just before the light turned green, Someone's sitting at a traffic light 
throw up that thrum at me Because they know I'm About to say Thumbs up for Mother Universe And as we leave this Mothership that's gone around As if we matter If it's all up to me And you Or them We will surely Lonnie Holly, live at home, live on Grocery on Home, which is a the home of Matt Arnett in Atlanta, also an independent music venue. Lonnie, nice to have you with us today. So glad you're here with us. That song was, if I wasn't given a chance to matter, would I matter? And I'm wondering, Lonnie, given your background, did you ever feel in your life that you did not matter? And, and when did you feel like you did matter? Well, there has been times when humans have made me feel that what I was doing didn't matter because it didn't appeal to them. Uh, a lot of times if I didn't or no one hadn't came along like William Arnett, and I was, again, I keep mentioning his name, but if it was not only him, Persons like Mr. Richard Murray, the director of the Birmingham Museum of Art, are the people not only in the art world, someone like uh, Ain't Savory Kelly that a little bit knew about art, or Mr. Walter Mitchell, one of the Tuskegee Airmen that lived down the street from me that had traveled the world a little but knowing that I was doing something that was different, if they haven't, hadn't had a chance to speak to me about what I was doing, I imagine I wouldn't have seen it matter no more than what I thought its purpose was. But the whole purpose of being the artist that you are, a lot of times we have to get beyond just being the day by day <clears throat> artist and saying to ourselves that I'm an artist for the duration of my life because I know that there is facilities now that's putting second after second, minute after minute, hour after hour, hour month, uh, I mean, week after week, month after month. I left out day, day after day, week after week, month after month. They put in all of these times in preservation of your art. And if you can't go beyond the individuals that think that you are nothing in their sight and see your worthiness in a greater sight, then it's almost like, we destroy ourselves because we never see anything that we are accomplishing. And it's really not for us to see that. Our history is going to be judged by what somebody sit down centuries from now and say, let's look at the data and let's look at how many humans from A to, A to Z they're going to put us all in category, and they're going to see how many A's, B's, C's, D's, all the way to the Z's. 
They're going to see how many humans was doing what. And then they're going to pull that up. And once they find out what these categories of, the, of examples were, they are going to have them to go by. Because I don't think it's going to be very much of art on the wall and institutions. It's, that's going to be more like a required thing for the the mindset that is required for to go and visit those places. The art is going to become so sacred and so powerful that it's going to be put into security until it's going to be only study places for them, that kind of art. And we are only going to be able to see photos of it. But as humans, we are in the process of getting ready to be able to deal with such futuristic events. Drawing children now, and I've already sung about it with some of these songs that you have here, if not through the last three albums that I, well, two albums, no, three albums, and then this last one, make a fourth album that I sung. If you listen at my work, then you're listening at are my works as almost a layout of the book of Holly, the books of Holly. So when people start studying what it were that I were actually able to exercise and exhibit, they're gonna say, wow, oh, now we understand his information. And we could see it on a biblical sense, how I'm doing the same thing any other person that was working in the biblical or listed in the biblical uh, that was doing. But again, uh, um, I think it's gonna be kind of hard. All right. And it's gonna take another minute to get there because we are being so distracted. And we don't really need to be being distracted like this, especially when you're being educated. You need to stay focused on what you're being educated about. You need to feel good about it. And then you can do better to understand it. Lonnie, we only have a few minutes left. I want to ask you one last question and then play the last song. But um, uh, do you miss traveling or do you like being at home? Oh, man. Once I, once I got to be an, a musician and got a chance to be able to feed the humans with my music, and I looked forward to moving around America, and then we start, excuse me, got the hiccup. I started moving around the world. Not only was it infeedable to me, to see all these different sites, to see different geographics and land mass of the earth, but also to be in the air and come down into certain areas of the earth and see them and then be able to add music about those different places that has made and affected me very much as an artist. And I just like I say, I appreciate it. Uh, and I will appreciate getting back to it. But I do know that we are in this pandemic. We are in the process of being quarantined. We are in this process of being social distance, but let us take this time and learn, learn students, learn humans, learn children. Just don't get on the computer and play yourself a fool on it or play yourself to foolishness on it. You got this digital thing that could take you so far beyond yourself. Learn to use it. 
And if y'all ain't gonna can't see me, I'm putting my thumbs up and saying thumbs up for Mother Universe. And do look forward to more to come from me because as we are talking now, Matt is sitting over there digesting some information where we can bring you more about Lonnie Bradley Holly Sr. All right. <clears throat> right on, Lonnie. Yeah. Every show of yours is unique, including this one. Every time you go to a new town and do a new show, that is a once in a lifetime unique show based on really what you're feeling that day and what you're, uh, what you're creating that moment. So it was a pleasure to have you on. Let's hear one more song that you made. We, again, Lonnie pre-recorded these songs just due to a reliable internet connection that we could have that way. And we're going to play this fifth song, which is called Every Piece We Made was the master's piece. Please briefly explain this one before we start. The concept is not like a painting. Every piece we made in the field, every field we harvested, every plantation we worked on, they belong to, to the master. Every ship that sailed away and caught us and brought us from Africa in captivity, they belonged to, to some master, whether it was a king, queen, them or they, they were the masters. So everything we still are doing belongs to some master. So it's the masterpieces. It belongs to them. And here it is. Just gonna go back a little. Because I remember back plantations ago so many of them around in America plants and industry as far as eyes could see Every piece we made was the master's piece. No time to make a piece for ourselves. Here it is a different time on the timeline and we hardly have any time. To make peace within ourselves Because everything I, I, we did now and then Was a masterpiece You all don't want to hear what I have to say It was about making the masters be in peace of mind Giving them all the moments of pleasure And any way they could find Every piece we made Lay there with the mouth to speak Can I sing America, America was made by the people, for the peoples, and we the peoples, oh, that's making the masters peace. Kind of makes it kind of strange for me to see how humans are being treated. In the midst of a democracy that's supposed to have been theirs That was made up by them 
that was sworn in and voted in by them. Yeah, yeah. Did we vote in the pieces of all our conversations for any administration? Whoa, 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 whoa. Are these pieces like pieces of puzzles that we have to put together? Are they like weather that we have to watch out and be aware of it coming? Every piece Think about how digitalization and globalization is moving all around the world. I thought about how one terrible virus can wake us all up and make us all aware whoa, whoa, what we have to do to be careful all together. And then there came along protesters, protesters doing their best to be examples of making the world a master's peace, making our mothership one great. Live on KEXP, live at home, Lonnie Holly is in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Greg Vandy. I'm in Seattle, Washington. This is KEXP, where the music matters. Lonnie, thank you so much. I can speak to uh, a lot of our listeners. We all want to wish you good luck, and we're very pleased for your success and your happiness in life. And it's really great to see you again. Greg, I just appreciate you all having me uh, and thrusting me out where my voice can be heard. Uh, I do hope that they do a little deeper research and research on my music look for national freedom which was did out there in portland well not in cottage cottage, cottage Grove, Grove, yeah. Oregon. sorry about all the problems that portland is happening is having but hopefully that will pass and you all will get back to doing what you have to do but otherwise uh, you got some great brains around there, and I think you all are bring things to a point of being subtle. But thank you, Greg, and uh, yeah, thumbs up the universe. Uh, all right, and I people can look no up. further. Yes, people can look no further than tonight on KXP during my show, which is called The Roadhouse, it's seven to ten p.m. Pacific, and I'm playing from National Freedom tonight. I'm playing the uh, song like Hell. Uh, broke away which is one of my it, it is my favorite song from the new album and you know that richard swift is my favorite producer and and rest in peace rich he's i i really miss him and it's a great album congratulations thank you and thank you all for listening humans i just generally generally say humans because all of us as humans and that one thing that we have in common but the greatest thing besides that we are all a thought smithing and if we keep thoughts sniffing, we're going to come up with some kind of answer. So thumbs up from Mother Universe. Right on, Lonnie. Thank you so much. And when this is all over, tell Matt to get a haircut, would you? All right. Get a haircut, Matt. And let's try to get back out <laughs> there to pick a again. Uh, right on. This is KEXP where the music matters. Thank you. <laughs>